Hello, welcome to the LA Institute video series. My name is Dr. Jose Luis Ruiz. And on this very important video, we're gonna talk about adhesion and bonding systems in dentistry and how to be successful with them. So everything, when it comes to, to modern dentistry has to do with adhesives. Uh, a great deal of what we do depends on strong, durable, uh, well-sealed restorations. And so prop the proper use of adhesives is key to, for modern dentistry. Um, so the objective of this, this little presentation is to discuss the principles necessary to achieve success with adhesives. Now, the first thing that we need to do is, is really start thinking about trusting adhesives. If we want to get ourselves involved in super gingival, minimally invasive dentistry, we have to trust adhesives. Uh, you see all, all the preparations that the LA Institute uh, uh, you know, promotes are preparations that have zero mechanical retention. All of our, all of our you know, the, the retention depends on adhesives. And I, I've had lots of my colleagues, uh, you know, question whether this is going to last. And, um, and really, I can tell you that the literature is clear that adhesives work. And I can tell you firsthand, I placed thousands of uh, restorations that are fully retained only by adhesion. And I've lost literally a handful over all this past 15 to 20 years of adhesive dentistry so and I place thousands and thousands of them so so I I have absolute trust in adhesion uh, so um, and you know by the way you know the in modern society depends on adhesion a great deal we uh, even airplanes cars everything you know that the, the we're that the, the we're surrounded by is using adhesives instead of screws, instead of a number of different other things. So uh, if you're afraid of adhesives, you might be a little bit, you should be a little bit afraid of getting on a modern plane these days because some of the most crucial components of them are retained by adhesives. So the dental bonding systems are, have been around already for several decades. We know historically uh, the first three generations of bonding systems were not successful and, uh, because we, we were not able to bond to dentin. Bonding to enamel has never been a problem. Bonding to, to, to dentin is what's been problematic all along. Uh, you know, we need to start by kind of understanding what's important. What do we need when it comes to adhesives to bonding systems? And a lot of people just focus all their energy in finding the strongest bond. And let's be honest, bond strength is important and we want good bond strength, but it's by far, the, you know, by far not the only thing that we need to worry about because what is the benefit of having super good adhesion if a patient has post-op sensitivity and they're in pain? We all know that. We, you know, we all went through all of that during the early uh, history of adhesive dentistry. When we were doing direct composites on the posterior area of the mouth, I mean, uh, uh, patients had post-op sensitivity even with the smallest little restorations that we did and that was a huge failure leading to huge amount of root canals and a lot of unhappy situations. So, so let's be clear, bond strength is not the only thing that we need. We need, we really need adhesives that the minimize chances of post-op sensitivity. We need adhesives that are simple. We need adhesives that, that, that are easy to use. What is the benefit of having incredibly great adhesives that are so complicated to use that only a few people can use them? And of course, we need bonding systems that are more durable. We don't, we're, we're all concerned about uh, the, the fact that when we bond to dentin, that, that bond is, it decreases dramatically over time. So, so there's a few things that we need when it comes to adhesives. And, and again, it's much more than just bond strength. Bonding to enamel historically has been very predictable, very easy. 
And uh, quite honestly, you know, we, we, we hasn't really changed a great deal since it first was introduced by Michael Bonacore and Ray Bowen. So um, the only thing that really has changed is that, that at the beginning, you know, the, the beginning of, of bonding to enamel, we were, we were etching the enamel for a full minute. And, uh, and we have learned over time that by etching the enamel for a full minute, in fact, we weaken the enamel, we weaken the rods. And, and instead of having better bond strength, we have less bond strength. So, so nowadays we're, we're, we're more, uh, you know, somewhere in between 15 to 25 min, uh, seconds of, uh, of etching. Um, usually, you know, usually 20, 20 to 25 is sufficient. All the problem, as we all know, has been uh, bonding to dentin. The first three generations of dentin adhesives did, really didn't do anything. They didn't work, so we, they, were, they were unsuccessful. It was, it, and, and all the future generations of bonding systems have been all, all to, do, to do with dentin bonding. You know, the, it, again, the, the adhesion to enamel has not been a problem for all these years. The, the fourth and fifth generation is total etch bonding systems. The, fifth, the sixth and seventh generation is uh, self etch bonding systems. Now, we keep having people change terminologies of bonding systems and, and, and an effort to simplify. I think sometimes we overcomplicate things and everybody gets confused. So uh, there's, there's other, other nomenclatures, other ways to to, to name the different bonding systems. Uh, at the end of the day, I think that, the, you know, if we understand there's a self-edge or a total edge, it, it really makes it pretty simple. So the, the first bonding systems to actually work on dentin were, was the fourth generation bonding system, which was first introduced by Fushijama and Nakabayashi. Um, when, when we learned that actually etching the dentin was not gonna kill the pulp, and when Nakabayashi introduced hydrophilic resins, or in other words, HEMA. And, um, and since then, you know, I thought adhesive dentistry really has changed the way we do restorative dentistry. Uh, fourth generation bonding systems have a long history of success. They're excellent materials. And, um, and we're, you know, we, we all have used them. The way they work, as we, as we know, is uh, we first use a, an etch or, or an acidic etch, which is, uh, phosphoric acid and uh, that phosphoric acid basically uh, dissolves the mineral components of both the smear layer and the dentin and then we go back and wash it off if you see the circle on that picture that circle depicts uh, a dentin that has been washed off the the, the minerals in the uh, smear layer and all of a sudden we have exposed uh, uh, tubules and um, the purpose of that is because then the next step is we're going to apply this hydro hydrophilic resin or HEMA and that hydrophilic resin which still likes a little moisture is going to go in, down, down into those tubules create resin tags mix with the, the mineralized dentin and create hybrid layer and this you know mechanical chemical adhesion is very very strong and again, it was the first successful adhesive for dentin. Then, um, then we, we place the third component, which is the bond, which is a hydrophobic resin, and that the entire com complex becomes more stable. The problem with total edge bonding systems is that, that they are difficult to use. And this is why. One reason is because when we etch the dentin, we use acid to etch the dentin, just like when we, just like we can over etch enamel. We were talking about that earlier. We can easily over etch dentin. If we apply our acids to etch the dentin and we leave the acid, the, the phosphoric acid, too long, that etching is going to get too deep where the resin, research shows that the resin will not be able to go that deep and then all of a sudden we have a layer of dentin that has been demineralized but it has not been replaced with resin that will lead to post-op sensitivity and weak bond 
Another problem with total etch bonding systems is that they're very moist sensi moisture sensitive. When we leave the, when we remove the minerals from the from the dentin, we only leave fibers, floating fibers. They can easily collapse when they get when they they're over dried. So if we apply, if we dry too aggressively, when we start trying to rem when we're washing off the 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 phosphoric acid and then try to dry. If we dry a little too aggressively, we will collapse the, the, the fibers. On the other hand, if we leave a little too much water, then, you know, HEMA likes a little moisture, but not a lot of moisture. So that perfect balance of not too wet, but not too dry can be complicated. And again, if we have either one of those extremes, then we will have post-op sensitivity, we will have weaker adhesion, and 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 really, I mean, scientifically, scientifically, we do know that if you we use the total edge bonding systems correctly, and some people have become masters at using total edge bonding systems, we know that, that they work and that we can use them pretty predictably. The problem is that they are difficult to use and. And surveys done by CRA or CR and other groups have shown that, that people that use total edge bonding systems report an, a dramatically increased percentage of post-op sensitivity compared to people that use self edge bonding systems. So, so it's just, a, it's, just it's, it's almost a no-brainer. Um, if we have any, if we have uh, occasional post-op sensitivity and it's unexplained and, and, and that keeps happening to us, then, then, then we need to switch because, you know, uh, uh, self edge bonding systems, our bonding systems, they are, they are far easier to use. So uh, the literature is very clear on this. I mean, even people in the literature, they, they, they are very insistent in the use of you know, total edge bonding systems because they think that historically they're better. In their articles, they show uh, a huge percentage of post-op sensitivity. And uh, we, right here on this slide, we show a couple of those research studies. Uh, and, and really, we have, to, we have to be a little more realistic. When we have patients and we have practices, post-op sensitivity can be, you know, the worst enemy of a happy practice. So for that reason, you know, way over the, a decade ago, I switched completely so, to self-edge bonding systems, and I cannot tell you how happy I am. Um, I've used a number of different systems throughout the years, and, um, you know, we learn a little curve. We, we, there's a little curve of learning when it comes to using these bonding systems, but uh, at this point in history, we know everything that we need to know about, you know, how to use them with success and predictability. So, um, the six uh, uh, generation self edge bonding systems are the two bottle systems. The seventh generation self edge bonding systems are the all in one. You know, the six generations are, 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 are systems like Clearfill SC Bond, Clearfill SC Protect. Uh, the seventh generation bonding systems are, are systems like Futura Bond, um, I Bond. Um, and and they're, 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 they have shown to be very successful. The key is using them correctly. How do they work? Well, basically, self-edge bonding systems work by uh, using an acidic resin. The acidic resin is the primer. And, and what it does is when we apply that primer, we, we don't need phosphoric acid anymore. The, the, the primer is the acid. It's basically an acidic resin. The acidic resin is applied on the dentin, and if you see the red circle on this photograph, you'll see that this mirror layer is never removed. The, the, the dentin cannot be over etched because the acid, which is the resin itself, is never, can never go any deeper than itself. So basically, you will never have a, 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 the, the possibility of over etching and you will never have the possibility of leaving tubules unprotected because you never uncover the tubules. So these bonding systems are devel developed, you know, you know, they're better designed, they, they're, they're, they allows things to work you know, with less complications. So that acidic resin 
will the mineralize this mirror layer, that mineralizes the dent, and it mixes itself with, with all this, you know, the, 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 all these structures, and then, and then, you know, once it hardens, it becomes your, your adhesive. It, it gives you a very good adhesion. And then on a seven generation bonding system, you have the second component, which is a hydrophobic resin, which strengthens this whole complex and it makes it more durable. On the seven generation bonding systems, it's all combined in one, in one drop, and, it, and, and one drop will do it all. So the advantages of self etched bonding systems is that, first of all, research you know, shows that, that um, the self etched bonding systems can give us very, very good bond strength. So, you know, systems like like for example, right there is Peak SC. Uh, it gives us it gives us some of the strongest ad adhesion to dentin recorded with any bonding system. So, so we don't lose if we use a self edge bonding system. We don't lose in bond strength. It depends on what bonding system you use. You can achieve very very high levels of adhesion to dentin comparable to total edge bonding systems. And a, 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 an extra benefit is the moisture is not a, a concern because since we don't we don't demineralize dentin and then wash wash it off wash the minerals off, we never have uh, you know fibers they're just unprotected. So if the, the dentin is a little wet, if the dentin is a little dry during this procedure, it doesn't make much difference, and the research shows that. One of the biggest benefits of selfish bonding systems is durability. We know that, that when we bond to dentin, all bonding systems decrease over time. That adhesion decreases over time. But that, in fact, is, a, is higher when we use total edge bonding system. First of all, because we, we, we always ha run the risk of over etching the dentin and, and not replacing the you know the, the mineralized uh, dentin with resin as we talked about earlier I know the reason is the research shows that sometimes um, you know sometimes we we traumatize the dentin with too much acid and that that weakens that dentin uh, research is, is showing more and more currently that there's some bonding systems that are showing incredibly uh, long-lasting adhesion to dentin that is starting to almost you know, last as long as bonding to enamel. That, in fact, has been my personal experience with, 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 with newer adhesives, with adhesives like Clear C Protect, uh, Clear C Bond, where, where, where these adhesives do not irritate the dentin, They're, they have low acidity, and, uh, and when I have found myself with the need to, to remove all restorations, I have found that my adhesion to dentin was not lost, even after 10 years. So it is pretty impressive. And, and, and I mean, my personal experience has been consistent with what research is showing. Nevertheless, there is one small disadvantage with total the self etch bonding systems, and that is that self etch bonding systems don't, don't etch the enamel very well. And, um, and you know, we all have experience using self edge bonding systems as the manufacturers recommend and ending up with like yellow and brown margins and, and we, it makes us very unhappy when we see that. And, and the reason why is because they don't etch the enamel very well, especially um, non-cut enamel. So what are we going to do in those cases? Well, let me tell you that more than 10 years ago, I did a study with Dr. Warner Finger and we, uh, we, we, the Dr. Wonderfinger is the inventor of iBond and the inventor of Gluma and a number of other products that we use in dentistry a, a great deal. And, um, you know, basically our study was to compare the bond strength of iBond, which is this invention, com you know, w when we use it on enamel straight and compare, compare that with etching the enamel first and then utilizing iBond on top of that. And as you may imagine, uh, when we etch the enamel with phosphoric acid and then use I-bond, we double our bond strength compared to just I-bond straight onto enamel. 
So since then, I mean, it's been logical to me that I etch the enamel selectively, try to avoid etching the dentin when I'm doing this, especially the uncut enamel, and then use my, my self-etch bonding system, whether it's I-bond or whichever material I choose to use. Um, and by doing that, you gain you get the best of both worlds. Now there's one more benefit to etching the enamel and especially the uncut enamel and that is that we increase the seal. The seal and bond strength are two different things and research, more, the most current research is showing that when we etch the enamel and we use a self-etch bonding system we enhance our seal. So again it's all, it's, it's, it's all beneficial to the long-term success. So right here we see a situation where we're doing a couple of a couple of occlusal and occlusal lingual restorations and we're applying a little bit of, of etch selectively trying to not get into the into the dent in as much as possible uh, for about 10 seconds and then we wash it off um, so so the benefit of that again is that it increases bone strength especially the uncut enamel and it also increases seal now what happens, as you saw in the video, what happens if we, by mistake, what happens if by mistake we end up uh, putting a little bit of etch on the dentin? Of course, we're not perfect, we're human. What would happen? Well, I did a study with Alcaba Shigawa, and we wanted to see what would happen in, 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 in this particular technique if we, by mistake, happen to apply a little etch on the dent and, and we discover that, that this, it makes no difference. 10 seconds of etching doesn't do a great deal of difference whether we're using uh, his invention which is Optiball FL or uh, Clearfell SC Bond. So, um, you know, our intention is to selectively etch the enamel but if we happen to slightly etch the the peripheral dentin is not going to be, you know, there's not going to be any major consequences. Now I do encourage you to be careful to not be a sloppy and allow etch to get into the, the deeper parts of the dentin or close to the pulp because then we, we may uh, en en encourage or, or, or we may increase the chances of a little sensitivity. So, so if we happen to barely touch the dentin in the periphery, that's, that's not a big deal. One more thing that we want to remember when we're using adhesives is that the technique is king. You know, really, all the studies that you see on the screen consistently show that the operator has a big, big influence in the success of the procedure. Uh, the same bonding system on the same tooth, you know, placed by different people will give you dramatically different results. So technique is king and it's very, very important that we pay attention to all those little things. So let me share with you a few of those little things that are important. And one of them is if we want less, you know, more success, we want to have a clean tooth. If you have saliva, blood, or anything on the tooth, it, it, it will contaminate the tooth and it will decrease your bond strength, will decrease your chances of problems. So have a clean tooth. There's a number of different ways that you can do that. You can certainly use <coughs> uh, uh, tooth cleaner or something like Concepsis from Ultradent or you may choose to use a bonding system that includes the, the disinfectant and you know one, one such material is one of my favorite bonding systems Clearfill C Protect and, and the bonding system itself the primer itself has a monomer that is a bactericide so it really cleans the bacteria kills the bacteria and it gives you a nice a nice situation so so you, so you know, you want to have a clean tooth when you're working on your, when you're doing your adhesive. The next thing that we want to do is routinely, if I'm going to be very, very deep, I, I, I most of the times like to apply uh, a little, that little red line that you see there is a little liner. I like to use, um, you know, a, a glass ionomer, resin modified glass ionomer liner like, like Ionoseal from Voco or, or Vitrobon from 3M but only on the very deep areas, more than four millimeters, four or more millimeters, I usually will line them. Uh, less than that, I will not line. Then, um, then the next step is always going to be to etch the enamel. And again, 
not only etching to the cable margin always go a little bit beyond a millimeter beyond the cable margin because that uncut enamel is the most problematic enamel so etch the the enamel go slightly beyond try to avoid etching the dentin as much as humanly possible 10 seconds wash dry remember because we're using selfish bonding systems if it's a little wet if it's a little dry it's not a big deal it's, it's better if it's a little dry but we certainly don't want to desiccate the tooth so you know when you're drying you want to make sure that you use your air and 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 you uh, it has to be dry air and when you when you're uh, when you're drying you you're, you're gonna see that the tooth starts it goes from from wet to to slightly shiny when you know when it gets when you when you don't see water on the tooth that that's good you you know you keep you keep drying it might it, it might start losing the shine that's okay you don't you don't want it to go any more than that though you don't want to over over desiccate then after that you're gonna apply the primer the primer is is basically a hydrophilic uh, uh, um, an acidic resin the primer is an acidic resin and that acidic resin is gonna etch is gonna dissolve the minerals all on the smear layer and the dentin uh, you're gonna apply the primer also on the enamel although you already etched the enamel but you're also gonna apply a little primer on the enamel and uh, usually you want to use a micro brush and you want to uh, agitate the, the the primer on the dentin not the enamel it's not necessary to agitate the primer on the enamel it is desirable to agitate the primer on the dentin now after we have done this for about 25 seconds and you do need to make sure that you give it enough time if you don't give the primer sufficient time it's not going to etch correctly it's not going to infiltrate correctly and you're going to lose some of your, your your ability to bond and seal your tooth after you have done that for 25 seconds the next step is crucial you must get rid of the solvent because all primers have about 98 percent of solvent solvent meaning water uh, acetone eth ethanol and any of those solvents are negative for the long term you know durability of your bond and they're also negative in regards to post-op sensitivity if you leave them there and it's not difficult to leave them believe it or not you know if you if you if that primer is not fully uh, uh, evaporated you are going to have you're going to have water ethanol acetone left inside so how do you make sure that you remove it? You, you need to conf visually confirm it. So you're going to blow air. You're going to see that, you know, when you're, when you're trying to evaporate the primer, you're going to see the primer move. When you see that it stops moving, that's when you know that you have evaporated all the, all the, all the solvent. So now right here we see, uh, you know, a, a live case when we are first etching and we etch for t 10 seconds only the periphery we were, we were careful not to etch the the um the middle part of the tooth the, the more sensitive part of the tooth uh of course you must have well a good isolation that's so important any contamination will lead to failure when it comes to adhesives right there you see that i'm applying the the primer i'm agitating the primer on on the dentin uh, be plentiful with the primer. Um, you see how those those prepar those are only preparations that have no mechanical retention. I'm not worried one bit. I know that that he, I trust in adhesion. I only have a few thousand restorations that I that I can fall back on, knowing that that it works. So I keep applying the primer, keep agitating, and after 25 seconds, I start drying. As you see. As I'm drying, you can see a little. You can see the movement of the of the bond. I keep drying, keep drying as long as necessary until I see that the 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 primer doesn't move anymore. At that point, I'm comfortable that the the that I have removed the uh, the solvent. And then, you know, in this particular case, I use a seven generation bonding system. So I'm actually going straight to a cement and and, and seed my and seed my restoration. Now, of course, the same technique is what, what we saw in the video. We saw, uh, uh, in fact, a, a, the cementation of an onlay, uh, but the technique is the same. It doesn't change. If we're going to use 
if we're going to use our, our, our self-edge bonding systems where, you know, depending on what bonding system you're using. In that particular video, I was using something like Futura Bond D DC. That's a seven-generation bonding system. It's a dual cure from, from um, material from uh, Voco. And, um, and it, it, you know, it is a dual cure. So you apply it, being that it's a seven generation bonding system, it's all, it's all in one. There is no, there is no separate primer or bond. You, you apply the, the, the bonding system, you agitate for 25 seconds, you get rid of the solvent and you're done. You're ready to, you're ready to cement your onlay or to cure and start placing your, your filling. Um, so this, the, the, the procedure, you know, really is consistent with whether it's a se six or seven generation bonding system. So, so in conclusion, you know, your, your, your goal is to, to trust in adhesives. They work. We know that they work. We know the selfage bonding systems. I mean, I, I personally can tell you that, that, I, that I love selfage bonding systems. I know they work. And, um, and, and today's self-edge bonding systems are in fact superior to total edge bonding systems for a number of reasons. And let's remember that, that it's not just what bonding system we use, but it's, it's very much how we use it. And on this video, I have shared with you some of the most important things that we need to keep in mind in order to have success with adhesives. Another important thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to uh, adhesives is proper curing because most of the adhesives today it require uh, light to cure them and um, and improperly curing adhesives and resins have become a major concern if our lights do not have the sufficient uh, milliwatts required to activate our initiators then we could end up having bonding systems or composites that are improperly cured and that would lead to failure and, and you know whether it's with sensitivity or with the restoration not bonding correctly so proper curing is, is, is a must so it is very important to properly cure your bond and your direct composite and your cement so uh, the speed of cure doesn't really make that much difference the literature and CRA has been pretty clear on this I personally like to use a very fast curing light. I, I use the ultra the, the, val, the ultra dense valo, and it's a three second light. And um, and it, you know the important thing is that we cure our restoration and our bond correctly. So when we fulfill all those requirements, we can trust in adhesion. Adhesion works, and it is really a pleasure to have shared this information with you. You are welcome to. Uh, go to the forum of the LA Institute if you have any questions, additional questions about this subject. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.